message to all our viewers before we get started on today's video it has come to our attention that over 90 percent of our regular viewers are not subscribed to the channel we request you to please click the subscribe button and also the bell icon so that you can be notified when the next video from midwork is out the bigger the channel gets the better the quality of videos that we do for you also gets so please help us make some amazing videos by supporting the channel and clicking that subscribe button Thank you. Now over to the video. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Mythlok with your host Nitin Nair. In our last episode, we focused on the new mythology that we introduced which was Micronesian mythology and we decided to stick around in the region a bit more, maybe not Micronesian but let's look at one of the other major mythologies that form part of the region which includes Australia, New Zealand, the Micronesian Islands, the Polynesian Islands and the Melanesian Islands as well. So today we are focused on Aboriginal mythology and the amazing creature which is still believed to exist even today, the Bunyip. The Bunyip is also referred to as Kian Prati and it's a creature of Aboriginal mythology that lives in various areas of Australia such as creeks, rivers and swamps. In the Wemba Wemba language, it is also called Devil. Stories about these animals have been told by Aboriginal people and they have been known to prey on children. In modern times, there have been many different descriptions of the Bunyip and it is believed that the Bunyip made a booming or roaring noises when it was told to kill people, especially children and women. The origin of this belief could be found in the appearance of seals that were far upstream from the regular course and the booming noise attributed to the bittern marsh bird. The Bunyip is a bird-like creature that's similar to an alligator. Its head and body are similar to that of an emu and its long bill has a similar serrated appearance to that of a stingray. The Bunyip's hind legs are incredibly strong and its forelegs are longer than its body. Natives claim that the Bunyip uses its long arms and legs to kill prey by hugging it to death. When it's in the water, it swims like a frog and when it's on the shore, it stands up tall which could be around 12 or 13 feet. There are many different descriptions of the Bunyip and people claim that it has a dog-like face and a horse-like tail, dark fur, a duck-like bill and a pair of tusks. Others think it looks like a snake with a beard. Although it's hard to tell from the description what the animal looks like due to its varying appearance, all agree that it is an aquatic mammal. One legend says that a man named Bunyip broke the rainbow serpent's greatest law by eating his totem animal. Banished by the good spirit Bayame, the man became an evil spirit that lured tribesmen and their livestock into the water so he could eat all of them. Today, Aboriginal Australians use the term Bunyip to refer to evil spirits. This translation might not have accurately represented the creature's role in pre-contact Aboriginal mythology. Some sources also suggest that the Bunyip may have been related to the Bunjil, a mythological creature that made all of the animals and humans in the world. In some Aboriginal bedtime stories, the Bunyip is said to have known to attack livestock and children when they come close to the water's edge. According to some Aboriginal cultures, the Bunyip is known to prey on children and women at night. The Bunyip is believed to have supernatural powers. It can alter water level, cripple victims with its roar and hypnotize humans to act as its slave. The Bunyip is a core element of most Australian modern-day cultures ranging from characters being based on it in books, cartoons, movies and comics. Bunyip sighting tours are also very common in Australia 
very similar to the Ninki Nanka sighting tours in Africa. The Bunyip tourist attraction at Murray Bridge is a popular stopover for many tourists in Australia. As you can see, the more we delve into these lesser known mythologies from around the world, we come across a great new list of characters and animals that are so fantastical and such a unique and creative mix uh, that we are left astounded and uh, looking forward for more and more and more. We will be bringing you a lot more such incredible characters from mythologies from around the world and hopefully we will be there when we come across some real sightings of either the Ninki Nanka or the Punyip in the days to come. Thank you very much for tuning in to another episode of Mythlok. This is your host Nitin Nair signing out by reminding you once again that Mythlok is the home of mythology.